folks i hope you can hear us thank you so much for joining us on this friday evening um, i think shalini a couple of links in the chat section and while we wait for another 3 minutes for folks to join us everyone who's already here do check out the links i think we're sharing the boards right again in the chat section we'll take 2 3 minutes to check this out many of you are already filling we can see that you are on this link already um namin has what is what time is the workshop going to start namin we started with the workshop so uh, do check out the links that we've uh, shared and as soon as uh, you guys are comfortable it's a very very nice trickle course that ks here has uh, you know started the event with he mentioned that uh, some of you might have already received this we've sent emails to everyone who's registered so do check it there but in case you haven't already checked it out there are four boards that we've shared here all of them are the same you could click on either of them we've just created multiple copies so that you don't have any problem um, with you know the traffic on each of them i think uh, we have 236 people already with us so i'm sure there is going to be some traffic on each of these boards but uh, check it out i think we'll give it another 2 minutes in case you're facing any issues put it down in the chat section and um, right after that we'll work it so honestly we were just on backstage we were having a look at the deck and uh, i can promise you that you have a really exciting session for uh, lots to learn especially you know uh, interesting templates for product managers that you know um yeah here we we'll walk us through these are these are already present some of them are already present um on nero then he'll also walk us through some integrations we'll we'll jump a little more into the agenda i think smart has 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 that ready um and we also have a very very interesting deck for you all on the entire design thinking process uh, how much ever we could fit in this session i know case does these workshops for uh, you know multiple days as well so he's tried to give us like a primer in today and you know that's going to be interesting Uh, we have an interesting problem space statement and some interesting credits to win towards the end and some swag on this covering that while you guys are on the board um, another 2 minutes only uh, so do let us know if you're facing any issues i think it's a very very simple activity to get you uh, um, accustomed to you know the miro board so let us know uh, if you have uh, any questions put it down in the chat section i don't think i'm seeing any questions so i think everyone on the board uh i'll quickly uh, share i have a board open as well okay yeah. perfect let me know if you can see my screen i'm just sharing my screen not yet not yet not yet not yet now yep we can yeah. see your screen yeah. mm-hmm. okay. i think there are when you have just opened one of the boards i think people are getting this gave it another it's always so nice for sales and thing yep there are a couple of spots so in case anyone wants to try out you can see couple of spots here let me quickly do one hello case uh, am i doing it right i think on the bulk mode shouldn't more of these are <laughs> case you muted yeah. 
Yeah, okay. if you yeah click on that icon and then the yeah right. Yeah. I uh, just uh, try it again and click on the 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 word dog mount. Yeah. Click on it and then you see yes, and now you can type something and okay. press enter and type another thing. And that way you can make multiple sticky notes at one time. Nice, nice. So uh, zoom in a bit more as well, if you can. Zoom yeah. in a bit more. After each sentence that you type and you press enter, it creates a new. So you just can keep typing and afterwards press press done. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Judge me, what are you trying to go The best way to move forward is just practice. I'm the worst of it. If you guys can guess the animal. I'll be proud of you. Just like the cow. I'm sure, I hope. Responses. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know there's not a bad cow. That's okay. Let's let's avoid this. I will constantly use to utilize Miro on free content. Awesome. I think this was a nice exercise. So thanks for doing this. But let's get started with the workshop without further ado. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed smiling. Child. I like that. That wasn't that far off because someone is lying. But without further ado, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, I'll quickly jump into um, you know the introduction of. The product folks, and then we'll jump into the session. Not going to take too long. Uh, I see a lot of familiar for faces here again, but for new folks, uh, uh, the product folks is a volunteer-driven community of product managers, product enthusiasts, product marketers. We've been around for almost two years now, and um, this is our 155th event, um, offline and online combined. We have a bunch of resources. Um, early stage product managers do check out. It's learnpmbit.me. I'll put out the links in the chat section and in sergio.club. Uh, one of them is a free learning resource in case you're looking to break into product, and the other one is um, a program that we are we are probably launching a new version of it. So do stay tuned to our Twitter channel. Uh, for folks later in the journey, do join our Slack channel. And um, in case you are based in any of the cities, uh, once we open up uh, our offline chapter, we'll be happy to add you back to the WhatsApp group. Uh, without further ado, I'll probably share a bunch of more things in the chat section. Uh, but diving straight in. Smart, over to you. Please um, do welcome our speakers. I think both of them are super excited for this. Uh, and Smart, over to you for the agenda. And looking forward to this session. Thanks for taking time. Hello, hello. Thanks, thanks, Sohas. Uh, and thanks for that demo as well. Uh, my audio is right, right? Just confirming. Sounds good. Okay, perfect. So thanks for that, Sohas. Uh, and welcome everyone. Hope uh, you're having an incredible week. If you're not, let's finish it off with. You know, on a good note, with our latest session, design thinking with Miro. Uh, see, as a new age tech person, you, especially if you're into product or marketing or any of the uh, creative professional fields, sooner or later you'll find yourself using and playing around with certain online visualization or whiteboard collaboration tools, right? If you haven't already, uh, and with work from home, we uh, this has just amplified. Uh, everyone's on it. Everyone's using such tools uh, right now. And there's so much that you can do with a whiteboard, right? Uh, go back a few years when you actually use those whiteboards and the markers and everything. Uh, someone might run run productive, engaging online uh, remote meetings and workshops with your team. Or you might ideate brainstorm on things together. Or uh, just for the pure basis of research and design, uh, run agile workflows and just build strategies out of it. Or just doodle out cats and dogs to de-stress yourself. Uh, everyone's you know done that, right? I, I've done that myself. So uh, anyway, moving on. Here's here's what we're gonna cover in this particular session. This session, by the way, has got crazy ratings online. Uh, Case has more five-star rated 
crash courses has delivered those uh, more than when you know more than we can imagine uh, we'll uh, do a design thinking interactive hands on 30 minutes uh, from case and then uh, we'll also discuss about myro startup program uh, here we'll talk about that as well we'll talk and say a use of you as well and few templates you can use to make your life easier if you want it there's a template for that and honestly if you even don't want it there's a template for that so there are some templates you can choose from uh, with with miro and we're just going to see uh, how that works and needless to mention with tps it goes unsaid that there'll be gifts waiting for you at the end of the session so hang on uh, case and here will be three winners at the end of the workshop more at the end uh, we'll use the chat space to give details out uh, we'll also cover i i should have addressed this earlier we will also cover my miro's integration with certain key tools that you might be already using in your workflow right so that that is pretty important as well a well connected that you can use um, and make sure everything just blends right in we'll finish it off with a q and a session and uh, probably 60 minutes aren't really enough for us to do uh, you know to do justice with such a uh, i think design thinking workshop but that's uh, you know that that's how we we placed right now so it's already 8:15 i see uh, tldr in the next 16 minutes 60 minutes you'll practice design thinking innovation processes on miro uh, my personal favorite visualization tool and to make the best use of it in your everyday work uh moving forward today's guests are both from the netherlands uh, i'll introduce case first uh co-founder of the dutch design school studio.y uh he works towards executing training on design thinking for young minded organizations uh into tech especially all over the world before this he was solution manager uh, at sus for sustainable work at human capital group which is a part of the conclusion uh group He also worked as a consultant, program captain, workshop leader. Uh, he's done that. He's been doing that for a while now. Uh, he was also responsible for top accounts of conclusion, especially in cross media as well as business innovation. Bonus: We'll also get insights about how organizations nowadays can work on developing a culture of innovation, because it is all about the innovators, right? Uh, not just the innovations. And then uh, here is the startup program manager at Miro. he builds and uh, grows ranges of strategic brand programs for educations uh, non profits tech startups art bureau uh, so he's like he's a 360 guy here. uh he was an airbnb person uh, worked previously in the policy and communications team on strategic partnerships um, engaging different public and private stakeholders to set up meaningful and innovative you know initiatives for uh, territories and all sorts of communities Yeah, uh, that's it. Everyone, please join me in coming case and uh, case in here. We're stoked to have you with us here today, guys. Uh, over and out, and remember to have fun, everyone. Thanks a lot, and let me share screen with you. Then, um, yeah, welcome to this uh, this session. We're very delighted to be here and uh, to share some of the insights uh, with you today. Um, we prepared a Miro board for you. What we will do first is we uh, offer it to you via screen sharing, and later on uh, we will invite you to the board so you can really join us into the action. And um, the agenda that we have for today is that uh, after let's move to this part. So I would like to talk to you guys about what are the most used use cases for Miro. Um, We know that Miro is being used for a lot of stuff. So, for example, people are redesigning their kitchen, they are planning their wedding, etc. But let's dive in the most more serious use cases and also link them to you as a product folk. So, what I would like to touch upon is ideation and brainstorming. Imagine that you, as a um, product manager, you get an assignment to create a new product. You can choose for a rapid ideation template and invite all your colleagues to get as many ideas on the board. and just make a brain dump of all great ideas and then next step research and design it can be difficult to figure out how to approach your users without a complete understanding of who they are so you can start creating personas to get a clearer idea of your audience which will allow you to improve your products and services 
Um, you can choose one of our persona templates for representing and summarizing a target audience um, and then making sure that you have all the observations nicely in one place. Then moving further to the mapping and diagramming. So it's extremely important if you work in product to also understand the flow that your um, uh, users are going through. So then try to find a user or customer journey template and make a visual representation of your customer experience. Um, you can then capture the path that a customer follows when they buy a product, sign up for a service or otherwise interact with your site. Then to the next step, strategy and planning. So if you have decided on a new product feature that you want to create, make sure that you have a clear roadmap. So one of our product roadmap uh, development templates and you will be able to cover everything your team needs to achieve when delivering a product from concept to market launch. Let your team align and give them guidance on leadership to focus on balancing product innovation, meeting customer needs. And it's really a great way to communicate your process to your progress, to your manager or to your investors or to anybody that it might concern. And then the last part, since you are all working in product. I assume that you're working also in an agile way. So there are multiple ways that you can uh, transform your product roadmap into an uh, agile workflow. So you can really focus on the um, incremental steps that you need to take to make your product development, uh, uh, to realize your product development. So these are just a couple of ways that you can use Miro. Um, make sure to check those standard use cases out. And um, there are over 400 templates that you can choose from. And I just wanted to make sure that you know how you can use these templates. So here on the left side, you see the content creation toolbar. And I will zoom out a little bit. So if I click on my content creation toolbar and I choose template, and let's find a template that's relevant for you guys. So product development, let's do a product roadmap. And then you get here, all the information also, if you will click on this link, what you need to know to fill in your product roadmap. And let's we start with a user pre-filled. So I, it's nice to have some examples here. So I use pre-filled and it will jump outside of the board here on this side where there was no image yet. Then I zoom in just to give understanding how it looks. And then you can start collaborating with your colleagues on your Product development roadmap. Okay, let's do another one. So now maybe we want one to make start from scratch. So we were talking about the customer journey. Let's find a customer journey one. You can see there's a couple of ones that you can choose from. Let's choose this one. And now I want to start with a blank template. I don't need any um, input. So it comes here to the side of the screen because there was already an, an image. I have to drag it towards the board, put it here in this empty thing and uh, empty frame. And then I can zoom in and, and I can show you guys how it is. Um, and here is the customer journey template for you to use. So let me just uh, tell you that if you find it a bit scary to start on the whiteboard, take a look at templates. It will make a lot of sense for you to understand what is possible with Miro. And then there's another thing that is really interesting in our uh, template dimension is that we have our Miroverse. And our Miroverse is a library where all our users can make their own templates. So for example, great companies like Salesforce, um, here you have TEDx, uh, Atlassian, you have a lot of big companies, but also a lot of small innovators that have great templates for you to start working from. Let me just type in product and see what you will find. It will take a little bit to load since it's a big library. And here you see a lot of cool templates, product alignment documents, customer value proposition map. So I think you're working a product, you just take a look at the Miroverse, type in some nice keywords or look at the different categories that we have and you can find cool templates here. Also, if you are already a little more advanced with Miro, I would love to get your template also on the Miroverse. So make sure that uh, you get in touch with me when you have a nice template. I'd love to get it online and brand it also in your company or maybe in your uh, own name um, as, if it's inter in interesting for you. Then moving over to integrations. I told you 
Miro is a platform. So uh, we really try to make Miro your launching pad where you have all your tools that you're using in one place. So let me go to all the integrations that I find interesting for you guys to share. So for example, we have an integration with Slack. Imagine that I will pick here comment. I will give a comment to somebody and I won't do it because I will disturb this person. But if I give a comment and I say, give me feedback on this mirror board and I have an integration with Slack, he or she will get a notification in Slack. Then for example, if you're using Asana or another um, uh, task organizing um, tool, then you can embed your taskbar, you can make sure that it's uh, embedded inside your uh, mirror board, you can change the status of all the tasks, and then um, you will be able to visualize immediately your tasks on hand, and you can change the status when it's done. Um, going to another one, Notion and Airtable, for example, inside Airtable and Notion on the um, pages you have in Notion and Airtable, you can just embed mirror board and start visualizing everything that you need. So you really have all the features of your mirror board inside Airtable and Notion. And then I want to go to Google. We have a lot of integration with Google. So this is, for example, a um, Google Sheets document that I just copied paste. Copy paste this, then it enters like this, and I can just start changing the numbers inside Miro. So I don't have to go out of the product. So it stays here. Then another one really cool from Miro, uh, from um, Google is this Google image search integration. Just sure that you have it on your taskbar here because that's not default. And I will be able to just enter an image search. I want the product folks logo and it will pop up here on my screen. So I also don't have to go out of product. Then the last one, and then I want to give also the word to back to uh, case is our last and our most popular integration. I want to share this with you guys and after that, I would like to give back the word to Case. This is really the future of work in my opinion. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna give back the word to Case. Thanks a lot, uh, Yair. Yeah, it was great to see all those functionalities on uh, on Zoom and share it with us. Um, yeah, I really would like to, um, let's see, hide this one and then move over. So I would like to give you a short introduction about Studio. Um, we founded Studio Y eight years ago on the inside that the world around us is changing quite rapidly and it's getting more and more unpredictable. And I think that the impact of COVID-19 is a very good um, uh, way to, to show people uh, that uh, the world is getting more and more unpredictable. So people don't know what to do in those kinds of circumstances. And what we think is very important that people develop the mindset of an entrepreneur, one that spots opportunities and um, change them in value for others. So as long as you as a person are able to create value for others, you will always be in business. And that uh, is something that is important for individual people, but also for organizations. And based on that insight, we founded Studio Y eight years ago. And we're working in various countries at this moment, um, supporting all different kinds of organizations. And we do that based on what we call Studio Y Design Thinking. And Studio Y Design Think, I really would like to ask you um, to, uh, if you would like to come over to the board, you will find in the chat channel, the link to the board that I'm on right now. And I would like to invite you to come over this part of the board. So I see a lot of people are entering the board and it's great to see. So I will zoom out a little. 
and we see a lot of people are coming in this board. Let's see, we are still adding. Nice, so many people coming in. And what I will do is I have a question for you. Um, I will bring you to the side board where I'm at at this moment, and it's very easy. Just I hit the button, uh, the, the icon at the top of the screen. I click on my own icon, and there I can say, bring everybody to me. And bring everyone to me. So everyone that is on the board will see at this moment what I'm seeing at this moment. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a little voting. That's one of the uh, possibilities on the board. Um, I'm going to give you one minute, and I'm uh, asking you to vote for one of those four options on the board by clicking on it. So probably you will pop up on your screen, and you can start to vote on one of these items on your board. And so I wait for a few more seconds for people to vote. I see that at about 100 people on the board at this moment. That's awesome to see. And I will stop the voting. And then it takes a little time for the board to see what the results of these votes are. And it's processing that information. We just wait a little until that is done. And what we see from the people who voted on the board, we see... Um, that uh, two people um, know, uh, don't know exactly what it is. They ask themselves whether it's like uh, uh, designing a new product. Three people voted for, I trained people using design thinking. There are 11 people in the group that I once uh, experienced it. And the other people in the group, um, and I see that something was placed in front of it, um, they uh, have some um, uh, experience with what design thinking is all about. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to take you with us through this uh, presentation, and I will stop the voting area by clicking on it. And we see as a lot of people are on the board moment, it takes a little bit more time to go from one section to the next one. And I move over to the next section section on the board. And that's, I really would like to tell you a little bit about what we see nowadays with a lot of organizations is that within those organizations, a lot of people um, step from a problem right to the solution. And especially those kind of things you see happen. Uh, for instance, when people uh, talk uh, on Scrum or Agile, you think about a problem and you start working on the solution right away. And with design thinking, we do that a little bit different. With design thinking, at first, what we do is we take a step back. And uh, at first, we try to understand this, uh, the background of the, the problem. We really want to understand why the problem is a problem and um, uh, what is the problem through the eyes of the end user. And only after we did so, um, we ask people to, um, to look for the solutions for these kinds of problems. And if you uh, lost me on the screen and if you're on the board itself, you just can click on uh, follow me on the top right, and then you can see what I see. So the next part of the story is about what is studio-wide design thinking, especially what we did is we made the combination of design thinking, uh, where design thinking is a human-centered and creative approach to solve problems. Um, and especially the human-centered approach is something that is quite important in there. 
And what we did at Studio Wide is that we add, uh, uh, added that entrepreneurial approach to create value. And the thing that we especially think is very important to create impactful, sustainable solutions. Um, so we work with companies all over the globe, especially to create those impactful, uh, lasting solutions. Then one of the examples that I would like to give you is uh, the example from Colgate. Uh, a, little, an, a while ago, the people at Colgate thought, well, what we see is that there is severe competition in the market of toothpaste. And what they thought about was, well, can we uh, design a new kind of product that people can put in their mouth as well? And maybe it's a good idea to enter the frozen food market. So the people and the marketeers at Colgate, they started to design this new kind of product, namely beef lasagna. And uh, it became a big mistake uh, because they brought it to the market, but hardly no one uh, was willing to buy this product because people uh, really dislike already the thought about having to taste uh, beef lasagna that would taste like toothpaste. So, um, and there was another company that thought about the same, and that was uh, also Marlboro. They tried the same with ice cream. The example yeah. that is on the screen right now, I think it's a very good example of a company that applied design thinking in the right way. And that was the example of the manufacturer of toothbrushes. So usually you see if they design toothbrushes for small children, they design toothbrushes that are very small with a tiny little handle uh, uh, to uh, keep it in your hand. And um, what this organization did is they, uh, they visited a lot of families in the bathroom and they uh, watched how those little children were putting their teeth. And what they saw that they were holding, uh, holding their uh, toothbrush in a firm way and just uh, brushing for just a small amount of time because they don't like to bruise their teeth. And what they came up with, the toothbrush that was completely different, it had a big knot on it, so you can keep it really firm in your hand. But it also they developed an app, and that app you put in your phone, and you put it in front of you, and what you will see as soon as you start to breathe, uh, to bruise your teeth, um, you will see that there are little monsters in your mouth, and you want to defeat them. So those children really start to beat the monsters and they had to uh, brush their teeth for at about two minutes. And after those two minutes, they defeated all the monsters and they gave it to a little competition with their friends and their brothers and sisters. And what you see now by adapting this kind of toothbrushing, those children really uh, started to like to brush their teeth. So I think it's an awesome example about how to apply design thinking in designing a completely different way, uh, your, your products. Okay, sorry, now, uh, sorry Kees, yeah. can I, uh, um, could you maybe sure. sh um, hide the collaborators because people are yeah. getting a bit distracted. I like it, but I can't okay. imagine to get a little bit nauseous to keep on looking at all those uh, um, cursors. So if you could hide the collaborators on the board, it would be, make it a bit easier for- Yeah, I will. Uh, Excellent. You see that's uh, the button at the top here. And when I hit it, we don't see the other uh, visitors anymore. Then I would like to take you with us. Uh, yeah. Just, just another thing. Uh, do we want to share our problem statement maybe so that everyone yeah, can probably... It, it comes after this slide. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, excellent. Awesome. Um, so um, um, Studio Y Design Thinking is all about going through the design deltas. And the design deltas uh, were designed, and we designed it a few years ago, and we keep uh, reinventing the way that we, uh, we use it. Um, and it's changed into four different kinds of deltas. You see the Y delta at the beginning, and that states the Y question. Why do we want to innovate? Yeah? What goes wrong if we don't innovate at this moment? And why do we need to do it now? And what is our focus area? What is the target audience we uh, go for? And then we have three different kinds of elements in here. The first one is the context design. It's all about exploring the context. The second one is the concept design that tells you all about developing ideas and concepts to solve the problem that you come up with in the context uh, design phase. And then the last one is market design. It's how to bring it to the market and how to conquer the mass market with your product or service. And now I really would like to take you with us in the next step. And the next step is that we have a challenge for you. And the challenge is how might we ensure that daily wage workers still have an income when work stops uh, caused by events like COVID-19? 
And as we probably all know, that there are a lot of uh, daily wage workers in India, and a lot of them uh, ran out of work due to COVID-19. And we know that uh, this has uh, a lot of uh, impact, not only to those people, but also to their families, because what you see, the increase in hunger, for instance. So um, I really would like to ask you to think about this how might we question, and I will share the how might we question at the end as well at the center part of the board, and to think about what kind of solution can you design for one uh, by applying design thinking. And um, I would like to ask you to come up with solutions or with uh, um, a prob of, or um, your first uh, drawings about those solutions and share those solutions via social media. And you can take the product folks, Miro and Studio Y in there. And the one that we think has the most powerful solution or the most uh, a crazy idea about how to solve this challenge will get some goodies from us. Uh, after this session. So you get, uh, let's say, at about 48 hours to share your solutions on social media. Make sure you tag the product Fox, Miro, and Studio Y, and we will make sure that the most craziest and, and uh, best solution that we found in there, that we will send you some goodies afterwards. So I will take you with us through the process of design thinking, and we do that based on a challenge that we did earlier for a Dutch theme park. And the theme park, they found that uh, at the entrance gate, there were a, were a lot of people that were um, uh, going in that, uh, that area. And at that area, they, um, uh, they gathered all those people, and they thought, well, why don't those people enter uh, the theme park? Probably what goes wrong is that we don't have uh, enough capacity at uh, um, the entrance. So they asked us this question, well, how can we make the process of checking in go faster uh, so that there are less queues at the entrance of the theme park? And that was the starting of this project. Um, and then we uh, started the, the process with the first three steps. The first one is uh, start to understand uh, the problem. So what is the problem for the eyes of the end user, uh, uh, of, the, of the commissioner, of the problem owner? And then the second one is go out and explore. You go out and explore trends, technology, but especially insights. And um, this picture explains what this is all about, because you might have uh, an idea about what the situation is all about, but it's not about your vision on the situation, but it's more about the vision of the end user. So what is the end user thinking? What are they feeling? So you really want to gain empathy uh, and uh, step into the shoes of the end user and look at the problem from their perspective and try to understand what this is all about. And in this challenge, we came up with the core of the problem was how can we prevent group formation at the entrance uh, of the theme park so that there are fewer queues? Because what we found out that there was group forming at the or group formation at the entrance because there was only one person within a group that bought the tickets uh, previously online and they had to wait in front of it until the the entire group was complete. So they had to wait for their grandfather and grandmother, for instance, and maybe a cousin that still had to arrive. And only when the group was complete, they could enter the, um, the, the theme park because only one of those persons had the tickets. And then you move on to the second phase, and that's the concept design. And in that phase, you start to generate as many ideas as possible. And what you need for that one is especially creativity. And what I really would like to ask you is um, to put in the chat some wrong answers for this question. So I would like to ask you to give answers in the chat and give me wrong answers to this question, please. And I see already a lot of wrong answers coming in the chat. Yeah, excellent. Those are excellent wrong answers. Great. What I would like uh, um, to, to share with you that quite some of the wrong answers, they are numbers. And so they are completely in line with the question. And indeed, they are wrong answers, but we call them inside the box ideas because they're completely in line with the question. I see that also uh, some other people, uh, they say haha or a word like bananas. And those are words, we call them outside the box ideas. 
and uh, because they're not completely aligned with the question, um, uh, but still they are wrong ideas. But I, what the kind of uh, answers that I hardly did see were the last ones, and those are the crazy ideas. It's the idea like, for instance, uh, a flying train or uh, a blood red rack or things like that. And those are the kinds of answers that you say, ha, that's not possible, but I like it. And those are usually the kind of ideas that you're really looking for because it's much easier to come from a very crazy idea to something that, uh, that is quite possible than uh, go for the obvious and then make it a little bit more sexy. So the things that we are looking for, if we are generating ideas, we want to generate as many ideas as possible, and we especially are looking for the crazy ideas. And those crazy ideas are uh, the theme park in the Netherlands. They came up with this concept. And this concept is, was called Tiki Ticket. So if you order your tickets online, afterwards you could share them via uh, the app of the theme park uh, with the other people in the group. So when people arrive at the theme park, they don't have to wait at the entrance, but they just can go in uh, to the theme park and they will meet each other in the theme park. And what they did in this app, oh, that went a little bit too fast that they um, put some some uh, locations in the theme park where people could meet. So you just make um, an appointment with the other people in the team that you will meet, for instance, at the first star. And um, usually those stars are at the, uh, uh, the restaurant locations of the uh, theme park. So not only there will be less queues at the entrance, but also people will start buying the products of the theme parks. So the turnover of the theme parks goes up without having uh, that many uh, rows uh, at the entrance gate. And still they didn't have to invest anything at the entrance square. Uh, they didn't uh, need to hire for more people over there, but find a solution through the eyes of the end user. And then the last phase that comes afterwards is the phase of market design, where you go out and you go out for prototype, experiment, and learn. And usually these are the kinds of things that you'll see also in, uh, in Scrum, uh, where people uh, work on uh, build, measure, and learn cycles like that one. So what you especially see, what this thinking does, is that we uh, especially add the whole process to explore the circumstances at the beginning of the process. So you don't work on the right solution um, uh, for a problem, but you work for the right solution for the right problem. Because in case of the theme park, uh, they uh, would have thought about restructuring the entrance gate and uh, hiring more people so they could uh, um, speed up the entrance uh, process at, at the theme park. But that wasn't the core of the problem. The core of the problem was that people wanted to hand over their tickets. And yeah, sure, they wanted to enter the park earlier, but they couldn't because only one of them had the tickets. And uh, by uh, finding a solution for this one, we help the theme park to move forward. And um, well, this is the whole process about the design deltas. What we will do via the product folks, you will get a link to download uh, the uh, what we call the Dutch design guide. And it gives you a little bit more insights about the different steps and also the backgrounds and the minds that we have in this one. And this was an image about one of the events that we organized last year, somewhere in February, with a lot of people gathering at our st uh, studio in the Netherlands, and we still could uh, meet face to face. And then also in the Netherlands, we had to deal with the impact of COVID-19. And for us, that was a moment that we decided to adjust design thinking on the way that we helped our customers because we all offer a lot of experiences, a lot of events, and a lot of training for uh, people around the globe, but we were not able to bring them together anymore. And at that moment, we decided to help the Dutch Ministry of, um, of uh, Care uh, to organize a big hackathon with 600 participants, with which huge in the Netherlands, uh, and we worked on all different kinds of problems um, related to COVID-19. And we bumped into one of those mighty tools, and that tool is called Miro. And we really fell in love with uh, the simplicity and also the power of tool. And nowadays, we organize all different kinds of events and training based on Miro. And what you will see on the board, we have some examples of uh, some of the events we, we organized, like the hackathon that we did at about um, uh, two weeks ago, about 300 people worldwide. And they worked in 30 teams on the different kinds of Miro boards. 
So my slide, last slide for today um, is that uh, we are working on also setting up a Studio Y uh, franchise in India. And uh, one of my colleagues who is present at this uh, webinar at this moment as well, Nithin is working on set up this uh, studio in India. And we are really looking forward to collaborate with other people that are willing to become a part of this new studio. So uh, I would like, uh, if you have any ideas of you um, feel like um, joining us in this way, um, I would like to invite you, invite you over to come to the website of studioy.com. And uh, under the contact section, you will find some more information about how to get in contact with us. And you get in contact with me and Nathan, uh, so we can see whether you can be a part of this crazy new adventure. And then I really would like to hand over the word to Yair again. Yes, and I'm also going to take over the board again. There we go. And yes, you can see my board? Yeah. Yeah? OK, great. So I would like to tell you guys a bit more about our startup program. So for Miro, it's really important. We know that startups can change the future. We know that they have the potential to really uh, grow and we're actually ourselves we're seen as a scale-up we were not so long ago we we're also a startup therefore we have a startup program where we really like to um, help startups to get started with Miro and we give our tool actually away for free so we give a thousand dollars in credit for you to start enjoying Miro and what you can do is you go to our Miro startup program website on Miro.com slash startups and there you find also links to startup events. Uh, we had an event last week on how to find your perfect co-founder. We have one coming up on creating personas. Uh, then we will have one on uh, humanizing uh, collaboration. Then next to that, we have really specific startup templates and we have startup uh, blogs on solving certain pain points that startups are facing. And um, what I would like you to do is just go to the website, miro.com slash startups, and then you can apply for if you are early stage startup, you can apply for $1,000 in credit and then you can select product folks as your partner. So you will see a drop down menu. You can select product folks as your partner. Um, and if you're not early stage, so if you're like already in a uh, company that exists for uh, more than um, uh, three, four years, then we also have a deal coming up specifically for um, bigger companies that are scaling but for now if you're an early stage startup we have thousand dollars in credit that we just can give away to you free um then i would just want to thank you for your attention and uh, please link if you want on uh, linkedin and reach out if you have any ideas to uh, uh, do things together uh, for start in india because this was really my first um, big event in India, so I'm happy to uh, do more activities there and uh, help uh, Miro also um, grow there in the startup ecosystem. Um, and then I think we're gonna go moving towards the questions and I will give the word back to, um, yeah, to who, I don't know actually to whom, but who's gonna take over now? <laughs> Well, thanks so much. Thanks so much. Okay. I hope you guys can hear me. I think there was an echo. Um, Smart, let me know. Uh, case. Can you guys hear us? I yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much for the session. I think we are just four minutes uh, to the deadline. So I think there are a couple of questions on the mirror board and one here on Airbit. We'll try to cover those. But um, case I know like you had to, uh, you know, uh, condense this a lot. Um, but I'm sure, uh, I think one or two questions that I see on DM were, are there any resources that you suggest for people? I know this was just one hour and we had to cover a lot of things in this. Uh, but if there are people who just want to start reading about design thinking, learning more online, uh, before taking up, you know, a full-fledged workshop, is there anything you suggest? Do you have some links that you could add? I think that I've, I've got two questions on, on that. So in case you have any uh, resources that you suggest to folks, uh, would love to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. 
What I uh, would like to suggest that uh, uh, one way is uh, just visit the website of studioy.com and you will find the blog session uh, section over there with some insights uh, and we uh, put uh, on uh, almost a weekly based new articles on there with all different kinds of elements about uh, design thinking. Also, what you uh, can do, uh, of course, is um, uh, is to uh, follow uh, us on social media because we share quite some information over there. And we have different kinds of webinars that we organize. For instance, especially a webinar about how to facilitate design sprints based on Miro. Uh, that's one of the things that we do. Um, and we will add more different kinds of webinars in the upcoming weeks uh, about different kinds of elements in there. Um, so, um, yeah, I think, uh, and also what we will do is we share the, uh, the design guide with some more background and information. Also, maybe one thing to do is, and I'm going to share my screen uh, for now, is that I, let me see this one. And... What I uh, have on the board over here is the board that you find the link to. It's the Miro board that we used for um, the hackathon of the two weeks ago. So if you, you can go through it, it's an image that we play on this one. But if you go to our website, you can see the board in full detail. And what you can see is all the different kinds of steps that are on there and how you can uh, build them in Miro. So you can just uh, take teams and go through the entire process of design thinking and there are all areas where people can work on and collect their uh, insights and share it with each other. So if you're looking for um, more uh, inspiration about how to build your Miro board and to adapt Miro in a design thinking process, please uh, pay a visit to this board. Um, and also there is, uh, this is a video. Yeah. Yeah, there's also a video uh, on the board. The right? Yeah. Yeah. It is in the center of the board that we just shared. As well as the video, but I would suggest that if you would like to watch the video, just click it by yourself and go there at the moment that suits you best. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I think uh, we're just on the dot, so uh, I'll do one thing. I see a couple of more questions on the Miro board. Um, Keith, maybe I'll uh, we we'll probably try organizing something around that. But uh, to wrap this up, would love to thank you. I think this was an amazing session. Uh, Yair, I think thank you so much for you know collaborating with us. It was a great introduction. I think uh, lots and lots of folks are trying out the board. And within our community, I think Miro was popular, but I think lots more folks are going to start using it now. And Keith, thanks so much for the introduction. I think uh, design thinking is definitely something that is popular in the ecosystem. This just gets us started, and we'll probably check out the resources that you mentioned, um, and hopefully more people within our community as well, uh, you know, enjoy and break into this and provide this knowledge to further uh, folks further in the ecosystem. So with that, I think uh, thank you so much for your time today. Um, we'll probably catch you backstage, but this was a really insightful one hour with you guys. Thanks, Keith. Thanks, Ed. Uh, thanks, thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Uh, remember, yeah. Reminder, uh, stay around if you want to stick around and talk to folks. The launch uh, feature at AirMeet is pretty, pretty uh, fun to use as well. So uh, feel free to just uh, head to that and uh, interact with any folks that you want to. And I probably we'll see you around as well. For sure. Yeah. Thanks so much, Math, for hosting this. And for everyone who joined in today, I think there are still about um, 193 folks looking forward to your suggestions. I think Keith did mention that project. In case you missed it, it is about uh, gig workers, you know, daily wage earners, and COVID-19. Do you, um, you know, if you could go through the process, figure out some interesting solutions for them, do share it on social, and we'll be picking. Uh, the best solutions and we'll be sending for some swag and some PM kits to you with. Uh, apart from that, to close this session, I hope you enjoyed it. This was one of our sessions in the workshop series. We've done a bunch of them on analytics earlier, um, on uh, wireframe, and this one was on design thinking with Miro. Um, and I also uh, extended a um, dollar thousand worth of credits to our community, so do check that out. I think that's a very interesting stuff. 
um, interesting things lined up for this month. Um, we have our regular teardown series. So in case you're looking to break into product, do check it out. It's the productfolks.com slash teardowns. Um, the winner walks away with an interview opportunity, and this time we are doing it with the Y Combinator startup. So very, very interesting opportunities there. Later this month, we're also hosting a couple of founders, uh, again, Combinator founders, both of them from the US. Um, the event link should be up really soon, but do check out theproductfolks.com slash events. Um, later this month, we have two exciting workshops coming up here. One of them with Sketch. I think uh, lots of uh, Figma fans in the room know, but this time it's with uh, Sketch, so do check that out in case you're getting hands-on. And uh, I'm sure these are just introductions. There's not too much that we can cover in 60 minutes, but hope this gives you a good start uh, of the different uh, PM tools that are out there. And we hope to do like an advanced session for folks in, in a version two. So most of the sessions that we have done today uh, till till it are uh, version one sessions that allows us to cover and for a lot of folks, right? Uh, we we had 300 folks, 300 plus folks at, at peak, right? 366 folks at peak. Um, so that's an introduction layer that we can do, but we definitely want to collab. We'll be planning lots more sessions with Haya in the future where we would want to go uh, deeper into these tools and technologies and probably pick more sessions from you guys. So if you have any suggestions, right, what is it that you'd like to see next, learn next? Also, I started this entire hands-on workshop series is only to uh, make sure that, you know, you get a little more comfortable with all these PM tools that are used in organizations on a day-to-day -day basis. So do share. I think uh, Miroverse is out there as well. Um, Yaya yeah, just shared a link, check that out. And uh, if there's anything that we could do, we'd love to hear your feedback. Do collaborate, do join our Slack channel. Uh, a lot's happening there. I think today there was an AMA there as well. So do join in, share your feedback, and let us know what kind of sessions you'd like to see next. Um, with that, we're signing off. So again, next time, thanks once again to the entire team at Miro, and especially Yaya, and to the entire team at Studio Studio Y, and especially Keith. Thanks once again for joining us. This was amazing. And thanks once again to everyone who joined. Hope this was useful. Uh, do give us a shout out if you liked it. And if you have any feedback, our DMs is always open. See you around next weekend. Thanks again.